rockauto.com. Well, Brian's got the ABS unit off and it's sitting right here on the table. You know, before we dive into the ABS unit, let's take a look at that code we found. Now that code is a C0550. Now the C stands for chassis and then our codes right after that. It's pretty simple. It's electronic brake control module, detects a malfunction. Flow chart, bam, replace it, we're done. The brain can't think, it can't function. Now before we go into replacing it, let's look at a couple of ABS components. It's pretty simple, why is it? Well, this is the whole unit and this is all sealed. That's the electronic brake pressure valve, that's what we're gonna see in a minute. That thing failed, we're gonna have to replace it. Now what's ABS all about? Well, you got a wheel speed sensor and a wheel speed sensor does nothing more than spins around, creates these lines of flux and picks up a magnetic field and produces an AC signal. And when it produces that AC signal, the computer reads it as a speed. And you can see here, the red light indicates high speeds. The green line would be a lower speed. So it's just changing it. The faster it goes, the closer the frequency is, it's going to change the speeds on it. Then what does it do? Well, it goes through some hold, increase, decrease pressure the module does. Well, now that I thoroughly confused you, let's go down to the table in true tech garage fashion and see how this stuff really actually works. And I have an ABS unit right here. It's a cool demonstrator. And I can fire it up and what's going on? Well, the wheels are spinning. And the computer's simply looking for one to go out of sync with the other ones. Once it does that, that wheel speed sensor picks it up. You saw the frequency change. The computer then, bam, actuates and starts taking control of it. I'll show you how it does it in a minute. But wheel speed sensors come in all shapes and forms. You got one right here that's a built-in bearing sensor. It's all built into it. You have to replace the whole thing. This one right here, this is an actual differential. And you can see it creates a magnetic field and it picks it up as the whole differential spins around. It's gonna pick it up right there. And then the last one I have right here, this is actually on a rotor assembly. It's a tooth ring. It goes around and it picks it up there. But this is an integral part of the system. It has to see the wheel speed or it can't function. Now, Brian mentioned it could be a little bit intimidating. Well, I have a couple right here to show you. This is a Delphi 6. Now, this is the one you see on a lot of cars with it all built in. It looks like it's one unit, but it's really non-integral. What does that mean? Well, you can separate the motor pack. Once you separate the motor pack with some transfer tubes going through, you can actually separate the master cylinder assembly. Now, once you separate that, I want to show you what I showed you earlier on the actual screen. Inside an ABS unit, there's some pistons. And through a series of hold, increase, decrease pressure, 15 times per second, I mind you, it's gonna run this piston up and down. As it runs that piston up and down, it creates a little void for fluid to go in. It lets that brake get under control, gets it with the other wheels, and everybody's fine. So as it's running up and down, that's how an ABS unit works. Now, our unit, Brian had it off the car, sitting right here. It said it had an actual electronic brain problem. So we had to go to Rock Auto and order us a new brain. They usually stock the unit itself. We got that and some wheel speed sensors because we didn't know what we were up against. But with this, pretty simple repair. It actually comes in this static bag here so you don't get electrocuted and you don't electrocute it, really. Not that you don't get electrocuted, but you don't want static electricity to hit that. Now, I got three screws out of it. I'm gonna take the last screw out. There's nothing to it. Once you do that, you can go ahead and separate this. Now, remember earlier on the screen, you saw the whole unit, bam, there it is. A bunch of pressure transducers and some different electronics inside of there. That's actually gonna read and tell us what's going on. This is the brain of the system. Now, before you handle this, you either wanna get a static band or just touch the frame of the door. Go ahead and take a discharge off yourself so when you come over here, you don't cause any static electricity. I'm gonna pull that out, really nothing to it. It's just a matter of clicking it on here. Let's get it on there the right way. Click it back on there. You can hear it seat, no problem. Come back. We'll put our bolts on. We'll torque these down to specifications because this is critical once again because we got a pressure transducer reading all the pressures inside of there. So we'll torque that down to specifications. Now all we have to do is get this back over to Brian so he can reinstall it. We'll be on our way with an Impala. We won't have an ABS lighter. No worries. Well, how's that for a mighty good look inside an ABS control module? That was just awesome. Now, here's a little tip for you. When you remove that system, there's a wiring harness down at the bottom. That wiring harness I covered with a rag and had face down while we were doing the service work. That way no contamination, no dripping brake fluid could get down into that connector. That's corrosive stuff. So we're ready to reinstall that module, John. I got it for you, Brian. I performed a little brain surgery and it's smart again. Awesome, perfect, <laughs> thanks man, great work. So to reinstall, we just reverse engineering this whole process. We're gonna make ourselves some room, slide it down in here. There's two studs you can see down on the bottom on the mounting plate there where this unit just rides and sits to get stable. And then there's one side mounting bolt. So we're gonna take our time, get a good install there, sit them right down on. 
we go. All right, and you can kind of feel a friction fit in there. I'm just gonna get this in from the side to hold it in place. And then, same thing. The two master lines go into the master cylinder first. A and B, we've got them well marked. That was worth our time and trouble. A first, and we'll get these back down to snug with our tubing wrench. And then if there's a torque spec, you need to follow that and honor that. And if what you're thinking is a pretty substantial bleeding process here, you're absolutely right. It'll be a standard traditional bleeding process, but we've got a lot of hydraulic fluid and a lot of air to get out of these lines now that we've had the whole system opened up. So follow a typical bleeding procedure, starting with the furthest wheel first. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna button these back up, make sure we're tight everywhere on the mount, and we're gonna be ready to bleed this system. So stay with us on Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com.